Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to episode number eight of my Minecraft Let's Play. Hope you're all doing well today. And yes, we're back with some more Minecraft and I've actually been relatively busy in between episodes. We'll get onto that a little bit more in a moment. But first of all, I've been busy adding some data packs to my game just to sort of improve my experience. Now, I haven't really added anything that's really gonna allow me to cheat or get anything any quicker so i've not added any sort of like of the crafting recipe data packs you can get from vanilla tweaks because there are some that re like change the recipes you get more resources but i really want to keep this as vanilla as possible and i feel like changing crafting recipes is kind of a bit cheaty and i want to keep this as vanilla as possible but there are some nice additions uh first and foremost i've turned on mob heads just to see if we can get a nice collection of mob heads I've also added a data pack to give us an extra crafting recipe, which is the invisible item frames. Now, I quite like this look, and if we go down to my storage area down below here, as you can see, I think it just looks better. Um, you still can't kind of like press on the, the chests in normal positions and stuff, but I like that you can see the chest more. It just gives a lot better feeling for me so yeah i decided to add that i've also added uh, coordinates data packs so i can do a trigger um coordinate toggle and that kind of tells me coordinates and times i've also done its uh, parent data pack as well which is the one for the nether coordinates as well so it can tell you where to put your nether portals and the final one i have added on is armor statues because i quite like the thought of getting an armor statue and be able to put them in different poses and stuff so yeah that is the final data pack that i have added into the game resource pack wise i've added a few more i've got now uh, arabic numbers rather than the roman numerals i've got sticky piston sides i've got a brewing guide i've got the lower shield as you can see here it's quite low it's not so obtrusive on the screen and I've also got directional hoppers, which I didn't have since I upgraded to 1.16.3, but I've added them back in and everything looks pretty nice indeed. So like I said at the beginning of this episode, I've been busy doing various things off camera in between these episodes, preparing still for that episode 10 quest. First and foremost, not really episode 10 quest related, but I've added this just little composter, automatic composter. It's probably not the most ideal of setups, but I can put things in the hopper and it will just basically give me bone meal. I do need to sort of put it in a better position because I can't open that chest, which is why I've had to put the hopper on the side. I've also been busy. I've been down to the nether and got myself some more Braves rods, this time without dying. You'll also notice I've got some phantom membrane, uh, which I have used to craft up some slow falling potions, which again is preparation for episode 10. You'll also notice here, Iron. I, I've done a lot of mining while I've uh, been between episodes, but you wouldn't know because I went down to my slime farm and I used iron to craft the final iron golems I needed for my slime farm. So I'm pretty much down to having not a lot of iron again, so that's still an issue for me. I also went into the nether and I did my first bit of trading with piglins. And as you can see, I got myself some crying obsidian. I got some blackstone and i also got some other bits and pieces like nether bricks and um some uh i think it was some soul boots some iron soul boots which are probably in my other chest i think so uh but yeah all in all been relatively busy in between episodes but while i was out mining i came across a skeleton spawner and i took down the coordinates and i thought Okay, let's head back to the surface, see roughly where it is in relation to our surface, and then we can build a surface level access down to the spawner rather than having to go through the tunnels and everything. Well, to my surprise, the spawner is right here. And what's even more surprising is it's right there. <laughs> We've been, so, we've been sat on top of a skeleton spawner this whole time. Now, in addition to this, after I'd found that, I went into here because I saw some ores and that lured me into the cave and I decided, okay, let's start having a look and digging out these ores. And literally within a space of 28 blocks, we have this. 
which is a zombie spawner. So we have one of each spawners. Now, like I said, I've done the math and the spawners are 28 blocks in both directions away from each other. And I did a little experiment off camera because I know that spawners activate when the player is 16 blocks away from them. So my big question was, was that a circle radius or a square radius, i.e. a 16 square or a 16 circle? Because I had ideas where I could maybe combine both of these spawners into a single farm just to basically improve their efficiency. So I jumped into a testing world and let me go and show you what I discovered. Okay, so here we are in my testing world. As you see, I've got a spawner here. And as I move um, 16 blocks away in this direction, you'll see it disables itself. So that the, the, you have to stand sort of here and closer. So I was like, okay, so let's now move this direction and see if I can keep it activated. But no, it turns off here. So the, it's a 16 block circular radius around the spawner that needed to activate. So as you can see, I set another one up over there, the same height difference and the same distance uh, on the overworld. But as you can see, none of these points intersect. So that kind of rules out being able to combine the two spawners into a single farm, unfortunately. Another, inter another interesting point to note here is I've never dealt with a spawner this high before. Anytime I've come across a mob spawner before, it's been low. So what we've done is we've raised them up into the air and then dropped them down to one hit kill. Obviously that's not going to work here because I really don't want to have a massive protruding tower or sorry, two protruding towers up into the sky to be able to get these two spawners to work. So I'm gonna have to have a little think and a little play around to see how we can do this. I guess the best solution will be we drop them down first and then we bring them back up to where we need them to be so i have a rough idea of how i'm going to plan out the farm and we're going to work on the skeleton farm first i think because that's the first one that i found so we'll jump back over into the survival world and we will begin working on some designs and some ideas for the farm Alright guys, I have come up with my design. I, I say that loosely because it's inspired by somebody else's design and I've sort of tweaked it to what I need. So what is going to happen here? I'll block all this off eventually, but we'll have water on these edges flowing towards the middle. And then we've got one hole in the middle. This The water won't be here. This is just so I can get up and down at the moment just while I'm laying things out and, and testing bits and pieces. But Essentially, the mobs will all get flushed down to here, and then they will all fall down this gap. All the way down here to the bottom. Like so. And then I had thought, well, okay, so that does that, that does that. That's all, that's all well and good. But then we have an issue where the mobs might get stuck here. So this is why I have put over here this little sort of piston here on a timer circuit here so when the mobs fall down they've taken the damage they will come across here and then the piston will push them over into the water stream they'll then slide across here and hopefully they will come all the way up to here and over to here and this is where we will do our killing so all this will be blocked off we'll be able to see them come here. So we'll put a hopper underneath here to catch all the drops. Um, now what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna split this between a an experience farm and just a loot farm. So I wanna do a piston whereby I can push a regular block or a magma block underneath here. So I don't think that will be too difficult to pull off. I just gotta think about where I can position everything, but 
everything's coming along and we are almost ready for our first testing. Okay, so all the water is now in place. So all that leaves to do now is fill in the roof here. Okay, our last bits of dirt are going on here. Let me just place my corner markers here, just so I know. And this tunnel is now obsolete as well, so we can get rid of that. But let us sleep first, actually. And then we will head down to our killing chamber. And hopefully, we are going to see some skellies down there. Fingers crossed. Well, there's an arrow. Okay. And it looks like as well... Oh, hold on a minute. If I just get bones coming here, though, that may mean... Ah, so we've got to see what we're going to get here. Because if we're just going to get bones and arrows... That may mean... Ah, they're not coming up. Uh, so we're finally going to get bones and arrows coming up here. That means that they're dying down at the bottom. And they're not... Oh, no. We have success. It's being a bit slow. And I can't help but feel like... They're not having a good time... Coming through the initial bit. Definitely down to a one-hit kill, so that's good. But it's almost like they're not being able... They're not able to... Get all the way up there, look. That's where they're getting stuck. So that might mean I need to... Reposition this lower. But it's working in the first instance, at least. But that is good. Also looks like they're getting stuck down the bottom there. Okay, we're getting there. We're kind of there. Alright guys, so we are back here in the spawner. And as you can see, things have happened. We've got a nice little room here now. And we've got some storage. And we've also got, as you can see, a nice amount of drops coming from the uh, farm. Now all of those drops have come relatively quickly. I've not been AFKing all that much. But I am going to be altering this design for a couple of reasons. Um, first, uh, which is a good example here, is these skeletons can sometimes take a long time to die, and I don't think they're getting the proper fall damage. And I think what might be happening is as they drop down, and I will show you in my camera cat in a minute, the piston extends to push them. And I think if they land on the piston, they don't get the fall damage, or there is a chance for them to land on other mobs. But either way, something isn't quite working right. And secondly, as you can see, we get quite the backlog here. <laughs> Which, you know, isn't too big a thing, because I can just come along here and I can just hit them and I can clear the backlog like this. But it's not ideal. I would much prefer them to all just filter onto that killing block right there and um, not have to worry about taking them out and doing bits and pieces here. But as you can see, experience for days from uh, those skeletons that have been there. So I think when I have thought about this, I've just been massively overcomplicating it. I don't know why I had to bring them back up to the surface. So I think just having that chamber there, dropping them down the right amount of blocks, and then we can have the killing chamber and everything down at the bottom. What I might do though up here is I might just build a big storage area. And this can be a combined storage area for both farms because we don't need to have separate storage the items will flow quite nicely from both of the farms into a centralized storage area. So what I plan on doing will be to have a filtered hopper chest system 
where all our drops from our zombie and skeletons can just come into this big system and be sorted and filtered out accordingly. But let me just jump onto my camera account really quickly and I will show you what I ended up with down below underneath the farm. Okay, here we are back with the camera account and I've spared you the noise of these skeletons because they really can be quite loud. But if we go underneath the surface here, you'll see there's our bubble column elevator. The magma block is just on a sticky piston here. So that will just get retracted with that lever right there. But we'll go down here all the way to the bottom where all of these skellies are going. And oh, we've got quite a little creeper farm going on down there. I need to be careful of that one. Um, but yeah, they get pushed along here in this little area here. So they drop down here, they land on this block. Then we have this timer going around here, which extends the piston. Now, the reason I've got that is I need to be able to push the skellies as just demonstrated there from this block into the actual water stream because as you can see some of them just stand on that block and jump around and do various bits and pieces but at the same time it's really not quite efficient enough because they're even not taking enough damage from falling or other things are happening which are kind of out of control of me i honestly don't know what's going on but like i said i feel like i've overcomplicated it as you can see i originally had it a little bit lower as well they were dropping down to this level but i found that i was just getting drops at points so i th thought i was dropping them too much so i i moved up a couple of layers but yeah really seriously i'm massively overcomplicating this i'm going to come down here i'm going to turn the farm off by digging out the top um to make it all nice and bright down there and then we'll come down here we're going to dig out all this area and we'll make this the killing chamber and then all our items will actually go all the way back up and maybe we can actually use this bubble column here to shoot our items out of a dispenser or a dropper um, into that bubble elevator and then they will go up and down into our dropper system over here but I'm going to go and start tidying things up and reorganizing things down below but I will be back real soon hopefully with a more efficient skeleton farm all right guys we are back at the spawner the farm whatever you want to call this thing and as you can see it's not really massively different to when you last were here so i went down after that last cut and i was chopping out a big area down below to make my killing platform and then i suddenly realized i was too far away from the spawner i was more than 16 blocks below the spawner therefore the spawner deactivated so that wouldn't work so i decided to revert back to my original method and i've just changed this up a little bit so what i've done is i've actually put some blocks at the back here to stop the water running this way i think that might have been my problem and then i've put a water source at the top so as they pop all the way to the top they are instantly pushed over to here uh, in addition to that you can also see that i've made my killing platform too wide this time just to sort of allow for a few more to sort of go in here it doesn't really matter when the magma blocks are out because they're they're pretty much being picked up on the first and second one but if i switch this over to xp mode by doing this the big thing we get from this is we are we can build up the skeletons more so we can have more skeletons in this area than we could if it was just a single block so we avoid any form of entity cramming and um, mobs losing mobs like dying because of entity cramming so i think we're going to stick with this for now i don't really see or know of a better way to actually do this at the moment so if anybody does in the comment have any better ideas of how i might be able to do this better please do let me know like i said this was sort of taken from like a regular bog standard mob farm and i've sort of adapted it to my needs and how i need it to work but I think I'm still going to go with the idea of having one big storage room for both of the mob farms. So, so now that we've moved and repositioned and rebuilt this area, I'm going to have to move all these chests and everything over here. So I'm probably going to dig this way. I have sort of marked out the center point of both of the spawners, the, the point in between. So what I might do is I might dig out to those coordinates and make my storage room in and around that area, just so the items have equal amount of distance to travel depending on which farm it's coming from. But as you can see here, just while we've been talking this uh this is really filling up i have to do something here though i don't particularly like that they can see me maybe i need to be stood on this level i don't know uh also ah uh, okay 
This may not work how I actually want it to work. It looks like we've lost the minecart. But that might just be me because I hit the minecart with my sword. Anyway, I'm going to tidy this up. I'm going to dig out to our other area. And then once we are over there, I will reposition all my storage stuff. And I will start working on the second spawner our zombie spawner it's gonna to have to be a similar design to this because the zombie spawner is only four blocks lower than this spawner here so again we're too close to the surface without having to sort of shoot everything way up into the air which i really don't want to do i'd like to keep everything underground if i can so yeah i'm gonna to get to work on that and i will cut back as soon as i have some more progress so yeah time to get back to the grind all right guys we are back and we have been very very busy indeed i spent about three to four hours on this whole area last night and it goes all the way over here and it goes all the way around here and we have encased both of our mob farms within the same sort of area now what i've done here just to sort of like mark things out for me roughly is where the cobblestone areas are is where the farms are active so if i stand out here that would disable the zombie farm and then here that enables the skeleton farm as you can see but yeah as you see i've started digging out this area and trying to pretty it up so to speak and make it relatively nice so what i've just done is i've brought over a load of resources from the base and i thought what it'd be a good idea to do would be to sort of look at how we can pretty this whole area up so we're just going to take a whole load of blocks here and see what we can come up with and just in case you were wondering i've been doing some maintenance i've been making up all these bows we have got arrows and bones for days as well as what's in this chest and considering the fact that our zombie farm hasn't been active for as long we're getting quite a bit i'll be honest it's quite nice to zombie farm actually. i didn't realize but a zombie farm is a slow way of getting iron as well which is um rather nice indeed anyway let's have a look to see what we can do here just to make these walls a bit nicer i recently did a similar sort of project on uh, the agware server which is a multiplayer server i play on with some of my internet friends so i'm going to see if i can replicate or do something similar with this now Let's start off with some stone slabs and what i've been doing with these is sort of using these as like corners and things so what i will do again here is let's get my stone slabs stone and we'll just sort of put them in on the corners here sort of denote that that is a corner and like a, a sort of focal point so we've got this in here and it's five wide at the moment i think what i might do actually is i might just bring this out so that the actual passageways are only three wide something like this Get rid of these as well so then we can walk through here like this we'll then also have we'll probably have a different block here actually let's what if we had a solid block I don't think it looks as nice as that. So let's just put up some slabs there at the moment. Maybe this is too high. Maybe we should only be worrying about three high, but I'm quite worried about doing storage areas further down the line and not having enough height and clearance. But once again, we can deal with this again. Um, uh, we can come back to it. That's not a problem at all. So then I want to actually do something with the wall. So we're going to actually start off with some stone staircases here. And we'll just pop in some here. And I think we'll do one, two, three, we'll do four wide areas here. Like this. Take that out. And then on here. And then behind that, we'll have another sort of stone pillar like that. Just to sort of break that segment off and then this is the bit of the wall here where we'll actually do the main bulk of the decorating here so we'll just take out these blocks here then we just need to sort of work out what we're going to do in this area here to fill these up 
So I think what I'll do is I'm going to keep some of these co mossy cobblestone blocks because obviously we've got these from the spawners and it would be nice to sort of involve them in the decoration here. So if we kind of alternate mossy cobble with normal cobble, maybe top and bottom. Let's do something like this for now. And then in the middle, we need another block. Now I'm thinking we could alternate between stone bricks and uh cracked stone bricks and possibly just normal stone so we could maybe do something like this and then that sort of like that just to give a bit of texture but i kind of want to also keep it uniform and the same all the way around so maybe not that maybe we could do this instead whereby we have Okay, stone bricks here. I just had another thought as well. So maybe I'll just add some variation in here in that, that middle section there with those blocks. Do that. Now, the reason I want to do that, if I head over to my crafting table, is I would like to make some chains. You may see in my inventory, I have some lanterns. So what we'll do with these lanterns, now that I've made that uh, an odd number on these walls here, I can actually hang some lanterns like this. Now we still need to do something at the top here, maybe do something with a, a some sort of ceiling design. Um, but for now, I think that's okay. Maybe we could like we need something else here potentially the polished underside look here like here yeah that could work okay i quite like that and then like i said we can add a bit of variation into this by using our cracked blocks so we can take say i don't know one there perhaps that a crack block there and maybe there. We won't do the crack blocks the same on every single instance of this. But I think just to add a bit of variation um, just gives it a bit of something else. And especially being near that cobblestone. I think adding it near a full cobblestone block as well is, is something really nice. If I had some vines, maybe I'd make some mossy cobblestone bricks as well. That might be quite nice. But maybe in the future we can go out and get some vines and add some to here. But... Okay, I think I this this is I think this is what I'm going to work with for the time being. So with that in mind, I'm now going to get busy and I'm going to totally redo this whole area with some nice looking walls. And by the time I come back to talk to you guys, we uh, should have a nice looking area. Fingers crossed. Okay guys, welcome back. And I have spent so long doing this bottom area down below where these two spawns are. But I am happy with where it is and I'm gonna show you now the end result for the moment. So we'll go down here and uh, as you see, there's a wall in front of us now, which is everything is a little bit different, but we go through here and this is our brand new area right here. So as you can see, I've gone for the pillar, stair, block, cobblestone theme that we discussed in the previous bit. I need to replace those two andesite blocks, but I'll do that in a bit. Uh, and I thought the addition of some trapdoors at the bottom would just give something a little bit different and give a bit of a different color scheme. 
You'll see I've also sort of used these alcove areas now as my storage area. So we've got bones, arrows, and bows at the minute. Uh, we've just got a junk chest there for the moment. I've just slightly changed this round a little bit as well, just to fit in with the theme of the cobblestone kind of around here. So I've repositioned where these uh, skeletons drop into. As you can see, we'll come down here. And then we got our enchanting area here with our enchantments for tools and weapons, armor, and for our lapis as well. We've got some anvils and a grindstone, a crafting table, just some utility things down at the bottom there. So, um, yeah, so I've brought all my enchanting stuff over from the base to get it out of that bottom area. So, yep, that's what we've got here. And then further around here, as you can see, I just need to replace those blocks there we've got our zombie storage area here at the minute so at the minute we've got rotten flesh and armor and then anything else so like food and bits and pieces here and as you can see same sort of principles as the rest of it here so for the floor i decided i was going to use a combination of stone andesite and diorite so i kind of wanted to go for like a ruggedy cave sort of feel I need to do that. Actually, I haven't done the floor in there. So the andesite kind of represents where some of the flooring has been worn away, whereas the diorite is lots of the floor has been really worn away. And I've just tried to sort of put some variation, some different blocks in here just to sort of give a bit of a better texture. So let me know in the comments, guys, what you think of the flooring. With regards to the roof, I've just literally just stoned the whole thing. So I dug out everything in the roof and then... Uh, filled it in with stone just to give a smooth on the ceiling because nobody's been walking on the ceiling so technically I feel that that should be nice and smooth then in this little alcove here which we kind of didn't really fit with the sizing and everything but I just thought you know what this is a nice little snug so I've given myself a little bed with some decorations above there we've got a, a stone cutter a composter and we've got some furnaces down here so that if we're down here and we need to smelt anything We've got access to it right there. So all in all, I have spent a really long time on this. And I have to say, I am really, really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think it looks great. Coming from somebody who's not really a builder, I am seriously really impressed with this. So I still want to expand it further. Obviously, we can use alcoves in the walls here to expand storage if we need to. I've also pre-filled the back of these chests with hoppers because I still want to run some uh, automatic storage. So I want to, instead of having the chest here, I want to run hoppers either um, underneath or above the ceiling uh, into the back just so I don't have to keep doing the uh, boring task here of literally picking everything up as you can see here and taking it over to the chests and doing everything manually because it is a pretty boring task and I don't particularly want to do that and as with a lot of minecraft stuff it's all about automation and making efficient farms and efficient processes but yeah like i said i'm pretty happy with how all of this turned out i added quite a few lanterns i've quite liked the lanterns uh, on chains and i've also added some just connected directly to the ceiling where I didn't think chains would look right, sort of here. We could drop that down to keep the lighting at the same level, but I, th I think it's okay there. We could potentially move that into the center as well. So there we go, guys. There are our two mob farms with our nice little enchanting and storage area set up here. What I would like to do next, though, is I would like probably in this area here, or maybe, maybe we'll go through the wall here. And I just want to add some elevators to the surface and that can completely block off that and give ourselves a bit of a safer entrance. Also, I am considering I could maybe dig back to the base and just have a, an extension of the base here. So I might look at how far we need to go to be able to dig in and connect this up to the base. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This has been pretty build heavy, this episode. And like I said, I'm not really much of a builder, but I really enjoyed this episode and I'm starting to enjoy building a little bit more each time I do it. So in the next episode, I think we will be looking to probably dig down at the stronghold. We're pretty much ready. I'm going to spend some time in between episodes with some enchanting and some levels. As you can see, I'm already level 59 just from being down here and doing bits and pieces. So... 
not much more to go. I really want Silk Touch, and then I just need to get all my armor nice and ready for that end fight. We're pretty much there with our potions. So, yeah, I'm really excited and getting geared up, ready to go. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I've been Nock. You've been awesome. See ya.